Hello War of the Visions fans, I'm Jackie Fox. Welcome to Fox Talks Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about Sephiroth and how he's performing on JP. But before all of that, I want to highlight a comment. This is a really, really good comment. I appreciate really thoughtful criticism like this. Especially when you give me a compliment first, that, that spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. So thank you, Pikachu. First of all, thank you for these videos. These are great topics to discuss. That said, a few suggestions. Consider releasing these a bit closer to when the unit is expected to come out. So I'd been thinking that releasing them halfway in the middle of the window, two weeks out in either direction, two weeks worth of data from JP, two weeks away. So you have two weeks of planning time, which honestly isn't enough to really prioritize. Um, I thought that would be kind of the ideal. Also, it would be me releasing content in a different way, especially with this data analysis than other content creators are doing, but also specifically at the time when they aren't releasing their videos about X character because they're releasing either closer to JP or global release. That being said, after releasing this video and watching it do well, but also kind of poorly, uh, I think it could have done better in another week. And also another week, just letting it cook one more week would have given me a better data pool and data set and would have helped. So yeah, this uh, game definitely has waves of PR. It also pays to go with the flow of like trends on YouTube. I think fighting the currents of that is ultimately not beneficial for these videos. I don't want to release on the same week as other content creators though. So I think maybe right about this point. If I had released this video today instead of this, this would have been great. So on the other hand, how about I go ahead and give you that Sephiroth video you were asking for because this comment is from roughly a week ago. And, you know, you say you'd be more interested in seeing his data, especially how those teams have held up over time, and we can do that. Second, it says take defensive numbers with a grain of salt, because, you know, you can barely survive and still get that second defend. But I think the advantage of having so much consistent, like... Having 50 people trying that same team on the same day and averaging their defense, if it is the case that it's only good enough to barely survive one defend, then it's probably going to lose and get a lot of ones too over enough data. It might even get a three, but that's really not going to balance out the ones. If it's really bad, then it should be getting closer to a 1.5 on average. So yes but also no and i think that defends are really important especially because one of the trends that i saw within this data is that like there were three groups within my data essentially uh the first that did the most poorly are the teams that were neither in the top five of my top 15 for offense or defense the ones that did the second most poorly are the ones that were merely good on offense and the ones that basically did the best were the ones that did well on defense or um, did well on offense and defense. So those are just generally the best teams. Um, so I think that defensive data is actually especially predictive, while the variance between a 1 and a 2 can be really high and or non-indicative of, of that much. You know, like, as you're saying... Um, I do think that those numbers are the more important ones, and this becomes more true when you have larger data sets, especially larger data sets than I had access to for Gilgamesh here. All of that being said... Uh, the first thing I want to talk about here is how to beat Sephiroth because there are some patterns that help you make it through this effectively. So one of the first things, one of the things that's becoming most critical in the meta right now to deal with being cursed is physical damage reduction auras. Currently they can't be removed fully. Actually, I don't 
There are ways through Gilgamesh to remove Darios, but the physical ones are still, as of yet, unchallenged. No one can break them. Um, and if you aren't able to heal, you at least need to take damage slowly to be able to compete with Sephiroth. The second thing that I would say here, and this is especially true in combinations where you have Sephiroth alongside uh, Ash and Mont, especially, this is the most notable example, but also older Sephiroth and a number of other units that have AP Restore in their kit, um, Blade Stream is just a big deal here. And even if Ashen Mont isn't involved, because this was a really popular counter for him, because Sephiroth has AP Restore in his setup, and also uses a lot of AP, especially if, worst case scenario, he gets to his LB soon, um, he won't be able to do much to follow that up, so you will be cursed, you will be in a bad situation. But, at least he will be running low on AP. So the blade stream actually ends up being pretty important to a lot of these teams. The other thing I would recommend is thinking about the fact that his other skills will be prioritized above his LB if you have high resistances, with one exception. His LB breaks elemental resistances, so especially against water teams or water units specifically, he's really going to want to curse you as fast as he can, which actually makes his counterplay against Joom considerable. Um, especially since she tends to be a fast unit, she tends to get out in front, so even if he's only cursing one character on your team, if it's Joom, you have a problem. And because this elemental resistance is the break for his LB that is associated with curse, he's really mainly going to be using it super priority against water units. So how do we change his prioritization? There are a few ways of doing this, and basically we want to play into, intentionally, play into the things that are already good in this kit. Oh my god, I didn't upgrade Telluric Fury. I've been using that in this video. You'll, <laughs> I'm using a level 1 Telluric Fury. I'm just realizing this now. So this can lower Slash Resistance. Um, if he needs to, wider area attack and defense can be a factor, so that could cause him to use Sundered Sky, Telluric Fury, um, Blazing Slash also, so AoE resistance. Um, so if you build up your defense, your AoE resistance, your slash resistance, or the wider area attack resistance high enough, even as a water unit, although the bar is going to be a lot higher for people running fire resistance, mind you, but if you can get these things high enough, and the Sephiroth isn't necessarily coming in with high penetrations in these things, and there is no AoE resistance penetration. This may be the safest one. I mean, there isn't yet. Like, give it two weeks, <laughs> and there'll be a little bit, <laughs> but not enough to really change the way that this works. So most effectively, AoE resistance is going to cause Sephiroth to use um, specifically Blazing Slash, and you'll see him use Blazing Slash a lot in combat. And this is because, especially against newer teams, that AoE resistance can be high. So if you combine these two things, if you have these high resistances and you're using Blade Stream early, he's not getting his AP Restore. And then he may go into some of these more expensive parts of his kit and end up without the AP to ever curse you at all. If you can avoid that curse, that's a big deal. Um, another option for doing this is longer range status effects have the ability to just take him out of the game long enough that you might be able to deal with him before he can curse you. Personally, I like the AP denial strategy a little bit better for him, and I think that some of those defensive things go a long way as well in other respects. If you can combine that with a physical aura, a physical damage reduction aura, that's that's kind of ideal. Um, so Blade Stream, physical damage reduction aura, and trying to run like high AOE resistance, high slash resistance, maybe high defense, but not necessarily high fire resistance. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I'm just saying that running fire resistance is going to prime him to use his LB against you, and that's maybe the thing you're trying to avoid, especially in the AP denial strategy. There is, however, one unit that can be found with Sephiroth 
albeit rarely, um, that can completely, not completely, but the way that his kit works kind of bypasses this. Because remember that the blade stream is a TMR that your characters are going to use as soon as possible. Every unit I've seen prioritizes it. So it's getting used as soon as possible. You also maybe for this reason want it on the slowest unit on your team. Um, just to kind of maximize the other parts of this. But most of its effects only last for two turns, which is particularly short. So there are times when by the time they're in range of you, the attack reduction particularly has already worn off. This part of the TMR ability is really only good against hyper rush strats, which have a high synergy with Sephiroth. It's still helpful for that though. Um, so this can have another way of helping against those teams. But also, like I said, in a lot of cases, by the time units are squaring up, the effects have already worn off. And this gives a really cool space for Kadaj to actually be like the AP savior of the team because on his LB, he gets AP auto restore. And he's likely using that LB after the two turns of, of Blade Stream have worn off, as opposed to characters like Sephiroth and Mont who are gonna try to use those AP buffs early on and won't be able to activate them during combat as easily. So it really handicaps them and despite the fact that on paper, Kadaj should be handicapped in the same way, because of how long the buff dura debuff duration is, it effectively doesn't handicap him as much. So there's potentially another way to go hyper-technical beyond all that, and that's by bringing in a green mage with Emerald Echo. That would allow your debuffs to last for one additional turn. And, I, I mean, look, that could change some of these dynamics. That could make this TMR even more oppressive. But I'm not necessarily sure that I can think of a green mage that I would really want to have on my team at this current moment that would really be able to Emerald Echo. But that could be really cool in conjunction with this TMR, and I'm kind of surprised more people aren't doing it. But um, on some niche teams, especially against Ash and Mott in particular, this can be a pretty cool strategy as well. And it might even be enough to Kadash proof it, but what are you losing is kind of the question there. So with all of that being said, we'll kind of also be able to look at which of these teams maybe are losing the most um, from that or these strategies would work the best against. So for our most used units, we have Charles and Sol still. Um, we have Ash and Mont, Joom and Sephiroth. You will notice that that team is not on this list. This list was previously a 15 team list. I have also added the three highlighted in green that include Gilgamesh as examples of using Gilgamesh with Sephiroth. Uh, as you can see, one of these outperforms the rest. But Ashenmont and Joom, despite being very heavily used, as well as Joom and Cloud, um, I, I might be able to make a case for any of them being maybe 10th on this list, maybe? because the Mont and Gilgamesh doesn't seem to be the strongest configuration for Sephiroth. Um, but they all really underperform. They are highly overrated in a lot of ways. Um, I'm not saying that they're bad, because there's probably like easily a hundred Sephiroth teams, and a lot of them do relatively well, and it does better than a lot of them. I'm just saying it's really hard to imagine it within the top 10 when it was like 14th or 15th in my previous video and I've added new teams. <laughs> so on offense, our best team is Yuffie and Shalza, surprisingly, um, actually outperforming Yuffie and Soul. So the durability actually benefits them even more than having more offensive power, it seems. Third place on offense, and this is a new one for the offensive boards. This was previously only a defensively ranked team. However, it was the number one defensively ranked team at the time. And unlike other teams on this list, who I think have kind of lost some of their consistency with Gilgamesh, this team is actually seeming to not necessarily excel but maintain its previous relevance and that has moved it up considerably in offense because there were a, there's there was the biggest shakeups on offense i would say like i think every one of these uh ranks has changed 
for fourth on offense is Sol and Volke, and then fifth on offense is Sol and Shalza, or Bradley and Ashton Mont. So as you can see, Sol is a very important partner here. Also, Shalza is a very important partner here, especially if you're if you're going into fire, but maybe not necessarily the two of them together. I think this is in part because they really have a chance to get cursed themselves as there's not like a physical unit on this team. I think Yuffie is uh, also probably good into one wing Sephiroth in a way that, that makes this team a little bit better into the mirror. Now, there isn't a huge variation between these six teams, at least in their offensive performance. There's a lot of wiggle room here, but you can see those Yuffie teams edging everything else out. So um, while I would say that especially the full evasion team has kind of fallen, uh, evasion still remains important for Sephiroth, at least for his partners. On defense, we're looking at Glacella and Gilgamesh as the number one defensive team. This finally beat out the outstanding performance of Dario and Kadaj by just being even more outstanding. Dario and Kadaj, because their defensive power, interestingly enough, has wavered just a little bit, they actually fell to a 2.26 defense where Glacella, Gilgamesh, and Sephiroth is at a solid 2.5 in the newest data. Now you might remember this team because they were also uh, one of the more popular ones in my Glacella, uh, in my Gilgamesh video. However, because this data is newer than from that time of that video, and as I pointed out in that video, it kind of became a meme. JP content creators started talking about this team specifically. It's now a lot more used. It's the third most used team. So this one as I predicted in my previous video on Gilgamesh, has become one of the most popular teams, not only for Gilgamesh, but even for Sephiroth, which is just really fascinating. This is a very powerful combination of units, and it's gonna be relying on the Red Mage and Katana synergy. So this is an entirely job-based team, I would bet, for the most part, because there isn't necessarily, I mean, we don't have tri-elemental cards, you know, like, there are universal vision cards, but I would say if you have job-based VCs that you could run, run them. This is mainly what's fueling this team, and especially the more dominant versions of it. It also scored 4.8 on offense, which is not bad. It's just barely less than uh, fifth place. Then we had Dario, uh, so Dario and Kadaj already talked about that. Yuffie, Shalza. So the number one offense team is also third on defense. Uh, again, you can see evasion being selectively important. Ildira and Yuffie, so full evasion, also being important on defense, but uh, not really ranking on offense. This seems like it would be a better team on offense than it, it would be on defense, but hey, here we are. And then Shalza Gilgamesh actually rates fifth on defense. So this team had something going for it. And that is in spite of the fact that it somehow goose-egged. I, I don't know if the guy just, like, didn't swing that day, but it was literally only one person. Uh, they did get due defense that day, so maybe they're not awful. Actually, I think there were more than one people, person running it on defense, but just one person running it on offense, which led to this weird little data hiccup. And also the severely handicapped them on offense. They would have done okay. They wouldn't have ranked, but they would have done okay. <laughs> instead of coming in dead last on offense as they did. So looking at the teams though, I would still rate Dario, Kadaj, and Sephiroth the highest. It ranked both on defense and offense. And while it has fallen one place on defense, as there is now a new dominant defensive team for Sephiroth, it managed to excel its way into uh, the third place on offense, not by doing better than it previously had, but by remaining more consistent to its previous numbers than other offensive teams did with the introduction of, Gil introduction of Gilgamesh. And it is worth pointing out that in this data set that I'm talking about here, because we had to skip a couple weeks because Guild Battle was down in JP or Limited or something, some combination of those two things, which I mentioned in my Gilgamesh video, which really, really ruined my data. 
Um, Luciel is available for these. She's, I, I even saw teams in which she's used, but none of them were super popular yet. None of them look like good data sets to compare, but technically, uh, Glaciella, I'm sorry, Luciel is viable within these. So she is worth considering. Sol, Volke, and Sephiroth. This was the fourth most used team and fourth place on offense, fifth place on defense. This team is kind of fading, but it is really popular and it is still doing well. Um, it's, it's pretty well-rounded. I also think that this is maybe one of the more expected teams in a lot of ways. So maybe people are learning to counter this specific team as, you know, I've... This was probably the one team that got pushed in content from JP um, for Sephiroth the most. At least in terms of what I remember. This is the build that everybody was talking about. I'm actually surprised it's only the fourth most used, but... There are some other interesting strategies, some of which work and some of which don't. <laughs> in fourth place overall was Bradley and Mont. I think that this is definitely a really good um, example of a team that can be countered with the Blade Stream AP denial strategy in addition to high, high AoE resistance. Because that AoE resistance is also going to be a thing that Bradley can't really cope with at all. And Mont doesn't enable him to cope with it in any way. So in addition to being able to trigger Sephiroth into using parts of his kit that won't curse you, your high AoE resistance is also going to make Bradley less of a sweeper and while it doesn't really play into Mont's strategy, if you're using the Blade Stream in conjunction, as I taught you in the beginning of this video, then you should be doing pretty good. Fifth place is Yuffie, Shalza, and Sephiroth. This came in third on defense and first place on offense as well. So this is one of the more dominant teams in general. Sixth place is... Sweetheart, Ildira, Yuffie, and Sephiroth, this is the full evasion team. Still doing pretty well, but I think um, the evasion teams have kind of taken a hit recently. But they are still useful and a very important niche. And they're just doing pretty well for it, um, for Sephiroth specifically. Because anything that just complicates that match can be, can be too much. Like, they can be the straw that broke a camel's back. Yuffie and Soul. This is a pretty uh, powerful team. Second place on offense. Does good numbers. It is like a lot of these other teams though. Fading on offense for whatever reason. But still doing good on defense. Uh, despite some of the hiccups in the data that I explained earlier. Shalza, Gilgamesh, Sephiroth. Fifth place on defense. And as a newcomer, that's those are pretty good numbers. And it's really doing... Uh, it's doing better now, currently, than almost any other team other than Glaciella and Gilgamesh. One of the reasons, also Dario, Kadaj, and Sephiroth is consistently doing a little bit better. Um, but other than that, basically all of the other teams that were defending really well in the previous data have started to fall off. Now, take that with a grain of salt because I'm only being able to judge by two days, but the JP data is what it is right now. Shalza, Soul, and Sephiroth. This is the most used team. It also comes in fifth place on def on offense. But overall, I would say it's probably one of the weaker teams here. Not by a whole lot. It is still good. But I generally would favor fifth place on defense uh, as a more stable team than fifth place on offense. Especially seeing what's happened to the offensive data versus the defensive data for Sephiroth. The defense seems to be way more stable. And for that reason, I think that Glaciella, Gilgamesh, and Sephiroth is going to be really good into the future as well. And then finally, we have Ashenmont, Gilgamesh, and Sephiroth. Uh, there's, uh, there's barely ways of tying this team together. Uh, you can do Katana and Red Mage. You could get Gilgamesh in with Sephiroth that's why they work well together but Mont uh, working Knight into that just seems practically impossible so the vision cards on this team are probably going to suffer for that but that being said it's done fairly well 
although it is another one of these teams that was doing way better before Gilgamesh hit the meta, before Luciel started to hit the meta than it has done after. And you can see that actually in, in a lot of these teams. And that's why I was saying, um, the ones that seem to have decayed the least are the ones that did well on defense. So maybe those are the ones that you should be looking at long term or maybe building towards instead of the more offensive teams, which may, you know, get more easily countered into the future. And again, this is what the data looks like in the most recent day that I have access to right now. Taking a look at page two, I mean, the numbers really drop off after page one, but you can see a lot of the popular teams that I've been talking about here and how they were represented within this data. Other thing I'd like to do, let's look at the top 100 specifically. People often ask me if I'm using like top tier data and I'm usually not because I want a broad selection. But looking at this, you can see that by far <laughs> on both offense and defense among the top teams this is the team the meme team that i was talking about from the gilgamesh video is is just legitimately the best like this <laughs> i was picking on the meme teams for a while but then this happened and i can't pick on it anymore but as you can see among those who are in the know this is still the primary team and even in those high, high, and, and like also look at the, the rank average on this is even higher, right? So this is going to get even more out of hand, I would imagine, if I go into the top 20. Yeah, that's almost a three to one drop off. And that's like a four to five to one drop off on defense. Um, and even these like ranked where... Top five. Top five is uh, good. Look at look at the drop off there. This is definitely the team, the the elite team, for sure. So thank you for watching, and I really hope that you found that informative and found some stuff in there that could help you as well as found that a fun and novel way of looking at it. And if you think it was particularly unique, then you should definitely subscribe because I'm going to do this more often. And, um, you know, I think it's useful. I think it's useful to have this within the community and also to have this perspective on it. But also, while I do my outro here, I'm going to be showing you some of my more random Sephiroth footage um, as I'm using my just... Uh, all-star team <laughs> and this team has some issues with this vision cards and such i'll probably put a little description of that on the screen but i'm doing the best i can okay alaya and mont can really lay in with asymmetrical warfare sephiroth plays into this as well uh mont and sephiroth are just a powerful combination anyways anything else that can accelerate that tends to work fairly well so you know despite me showing you the tippity top of sephiroth teams you know that there's a lot of things that could work here <laughs> and a lot of ways that this could work and a lot of open potential here to try out as well. So, hey, um, don't let this video keep you from experimenting is what I mean to say here. There's a lot of fun ways to use a character like this that does such a potent thing. So, you know, um, while maybe these recommendations should guide your guild battle teams, try things out in Arena. Let me know how those perform in the comments. Maybe that'll help inform my next video and kind of tell me what I should be looking for. Like what teams are doing really well right now and what teams have worked really well for you. The free to play option for YouTube is always the ability to like and subscribe. <laughs> that little subscription's not going to cost you anything, but it, you will see more of my videos and hopefully that's a good thing for you. If you want to 
Etsy and hear more of me all over the internet, though, there are also other places that I post. I have a podcast as well as a main channel that's been uh, putting out some videos recently. Those are also available as podcasts over on Spotify. So Spotify, YouTube, subscribe where you can. Give me likes. I appreciate it. Comment where you feel it is appropriate and or necessary. And there's also links to check out my creative fiction as well as uh, ways to donate to the channel as well. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Again, the free to play option for YouTube is to like, subscribe, and leave a thoughtful comment in the description like the one that I shouted out at the beginning of this. Thank you so much again, Pikachu. You really helped out my video here. No wonder you're a knockoff of the mascot of a... Of a popular gaming franchise you are very helpful thank you so much and thank you so much for watching with all that being said i'll see you in the next one